Hello and welcome to chapter 69 in the series videos program a test engine in C. So in this video we're going to implement the pass go. And I've just put at the top here a quick preempt of the kinds of commands we could have in the go. We can have depth, white time, black time, black increment, white increment, a move time if we want to limit the move to a specific time, and the number of moves to go. And all times are in milliseconds, so this here would be 180 seconds, this would be an increment of one second, and this here would be a uh, move time of one second. To pass this statement, we're simply going to use the string start function, which returns a character pointer if we find the whatever word we're looking for inside the string, and the character pointer is then pointing to the start of that word. And we can then use this very simply to process the numbers in this way. That's the easiest way of doing it, anyway, for me. Anyway, because like I've said in the previous video, string passing is not my strongest point in C. So, without further ado, let's get into doing it. I've prepared the whole function already, and let's have a look how it, how it is. The first thing we do is make some variables. The depth we set to minus 1. So at the end of passing the information, if it's still minus 1, if it's not minus 1, we know that a depth was set. If we set the moves to go to 30, then we'll assume that if moves to go isn't set, then there are 30 moves to go, because it's a sudden death time control, it's fairly safe to say 30, divide your time up by 30 should be a reasonable way to split the time up. Move time to minus 1, so if it's not minus 1 after processing the string, then we know the move time's been set. Time to minus 1 and inc to naught. And the time to minus 1 is the same thing. If that gets set, we can test. Here's our pointer we'll be using with the string start. And we set that the time set is false. So we'll assume that we're in infinite analysis mode to start with. So let's have a look first of all at a couple of string processes before we paste everything else in. I'd recommend really just downloading the code and pasting this function in because um, it's fairly boring, to be honest. It's all the same to actually go through. So if we receive the infinite command, then we don't do anything because we've already set ourselves in infinite mode by saying there's no time set. If we get the black ink, then our pointer will be pointing to the start of BINC, so we go forward 5 and process what's come after it as an integer, and that's our increment. Of course, processing this if the side to move is black. If we're white to move, then we'll process the white increment. And this way of processing the integers is used for every single other command that we receive from the GUI. So I'll just paste all of those in here. And there's really nothing dramatic to see. We set the time according to whether we're white or black to move. We set the moves to go, the move time, and the depth. And now all that remains is to look at the variables that we've set and set the various parts of our search information. So if the move time was specified, then we'll set our time to remaining to move time, and we'll set our moves to go to 1. That's a tiny little hack, because we'll divide this by this, and, sorry, the time by yeah, the moves to go, and therefore dividing by 1, we'll leave it as the move time. We'll then set our start time in milliseconds, and that means, by the way, that in our clear search function, I've removed here the setting of the start time here, so please remember to do that. And also while we're at it, I've commented out the ordering string that gets printed to the console as well, because that was getting annoying. So back into the UCI, and then we set the depth, if any, was set. The next thing is, if our time isn't minus 1, then our time was set, so we set that to true. We divide that up by the moves to go, and to be safe that we don't run over, overrun, we'll take 50 milliseconds off it. And we set our stop time to be the start time plus the time plus the ink. So that increment. So that's fairly self explanatory. The next thing to do is just set up for the depth. And this allows, of course, time and depth. So if depth is minus 1, which means depth wasn't set, then we'll set the depth back to max depth, because we'll keep going until the time runs out. And the last thing to do is to print these to the screen so we can see what the engine is thinking. It's, it's got as its variables 
and then we just call search position and that's that because at the end of search position of course we print the best move back to the GUI here and that's all there is to it so if I just clear the screen oops quit and then clear the screen and call make and now call vice and UCI and position start position and now let's do go white time 180,000 and black time 180,000 which is three minutes each and you can see here it's given it 5.95 seconds to think it's got 4.2 and now it's sent the best move out so that seems to be running okay if I go go depth 7 you can see now it's finished at the end of depth 7 and given us the best move if I go go move time and let's tell it to search for 10 seconds and we'll just sit here for 10 seconds at 3.9 by depth 8 and after about 10 seconds that's ended having set 9.95 seconds and one more tiny test let's say go white time and we'll say white's got four seconds left and black time has got four seconds left and we'll say moves to go and we'll say r3 and here you can see it's divided that up and taken the 50 off 1.283 seconds for the move good so that now seems to be working we're ready or just about ready to connect our uh, engine up to the GUI Unfortunately, there's just one more little thing we need to do before we do that. The GUI, when we're analysing, needs to be able to send us a stop or a quip command, and we need, whilst we're thinking, to be able to interpret that. So we'll need to implement some code which allows us to peek the standard input and then process it. And we'll use some code that's been posted on the Windboard forum to help us in actually doing this. So thanks very much for watching, and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.